filled it up. Charge is good. Got a full tank of gas. Oil pressure pegged at 30. Temps hovering down just below 180, where, where it's good. I'm just now leaving the gas station. Before I got here, I was uh, just cruising along, listening to it, and I looked down and I was doing 55 and wasn't even thinking about it. So anyway. All right, second impression. The cam has taken away some of the low end torque. I need a little bit more RPM to start and to pull out of turns, uh, like if I go into a turn and go to second gear. But right now I'm cruising almost at uh, 60. About 3,000 RPM and this engine's got more to it, so it's definitely a top-end engine more than a low-end engine. Anyway, that's my second thoughts. And also, the mufflers being underneath the cab is not bad. I can hear, barely hear it. Alright, third thoughts. There's some acceleration. I don't know if that speedometer is accurate, but I'm about 70. About 3,200 RPM, and it's not loud in the cab at all. I doubt I'll be running it this fast, but it's good to know it can do it. I'd never run that 216 this fast, this at this RPM for long. It just didn't sound good. It sounds good and tight. I'm doing close to 60 now. It's doing pretty good. May have to upgrade the brakes now. Anyway, that's it. got about a about 120 miles on it now and uh, I've been uh, doing uh, doing some adjustments to it as I go trying to uh, get it to where I want it and uh, the main thing I'm trying to get is the timing now if you all remember from an earlier video I showed where I uh, where I uh, set the uh, timing to uh, top dead center or UC and, uh, and now I've been advancing as we go now you may can see down there at the bottom those there's some white dots some white marks right there and the top mark is the distributor the bottom marks on the uh, vacuum advance now I started off with that uh, initial timing with the two dots or the two white lines aligned together. As you can see, I've been slowly advancing more and more uh, to try to get the performance of one out of this. So that's where I'm at now. I have not, I did try my Harbor Freight 
uh, timing light that would have uh, advancing capabilities uh, but it just doesn't work real good and you know what do you expect for what 20 bucks 1995 or something so I am utilizing the seat of the pants method uh, coupled with max vacuum and I'll explain max vacuum here momentarily but right now I want you to see the marks on the distributor how I've been slowly advancing all right now my best idle I had at around 700 R is about 700 rpm that's as low as I can go to have a somewhat smooth idle now that's primarily due to the cam I chose and uh, hindsight being 2020 I may have gone with the with the mild 264 cam or three-quarter race cam uh, that it's commonly referred to uh, as opposed to the uh, mid-range one that I went with because it's just low it's a little more lopy than I like at idle but when it comes to speed, top end, and acceleration, well, I like that. So uh, perhaps I'll get uh, used to it more as I go. And uh, but the cam has everything to do with everything, and I think that's the primary. Uh, as that's affecting primarily trying to get this engine to idle the way I want. All right, let's talk about the carbs and their relationship to the timing. As I've been uh, playing with the timing, uh, I've been, uh, of course, now this, this uh, engine utilizes a vacuum advance for the low to mid-range advance before the mechanical flyweights take over and continue the advance. So uh, these carburetors... They actually have three vacuum ports. They have this one, this one, and this one right here that's capped. These two are capped. Now, this is constant all the time vacuum, similar to this right here, okay? They use that for pollution control uh, and other vacuum like the work, the heat, ducts, and so forth, where they just needed a constant vacuum source. All the paperwork I've got shows me that I should be utilizing this port for my vacuum advance on my distributor. If you see, notice I've got my vacuum advance line that goes down to the vacuum canister to this other one. Now, this is some kind of uh, emissions uh, ported vacuum. Uh, I can't, uh, I could look it up, but that's, that's really not important for this discussion right now anyway. But anyway, this port has zero vacuum on it at idle. And as the throttle plates are open, it introduces thr uh, vacuum uh, up to the maximum, you know, depending upon what position the throttle plates are. Now, that's, I, that is ideal for vacuum advance for a distributor. That's exactly what you want. But the paperwork says this port is the one for vacuum advance for a distributor. Now, at, at 700 uh, uh, RPM idle, I get about three inches of vacuum out of this port. Now, that's not enough vacuum to pull the canister, so it's it's not uh, affecting idle at 700 RPM, which is good. But I noticed uh, as I've been toying with the vacuum, uh, the timing setting on the distributor, that when uh, at uh, low cruising speeds, let's say between uh, 25 to 35 mile per hour, I would feel this surging in the engine. You know, we're just I'm just cruising along and it's surging almost like the fuel's getting cut off. But I noticed this uh, right after I did my last timing adjustment. So, uh, 
previously and i may show this later the engine's still hot but uh, so i'm not going to do any connections right now but i my using my vacuum gauge <clears throat> that's how i determined i was getting vacuum out of this at idle and not getting vacuum out of this at, uh, at this port at idle now <clears throat> the vacuum it would appear is too strong out of this port because of that surgeon. It's like it's advancing and the engine can't keep up with it. So on a uh, uh, on a whim, I decided just to move to uncap this port, plug the distributor into that, and cap this port off. And lo and behold, my surgeon disappeared. I've got nice, nice cruising uh uh rpm now and no surging at all uh it starts and runs great but there is a drawback uh the amount of vacuum that is coming out of this port is, apparently is not the same amount as this now if you look they look almost idea identical in their position in the venturi but this may be a little lower it's hard to say because we're talking about, you know, millimeters or thousands of an inch. And, uh, but this apparently isn't pulling the uh, vacuum advance as much as this port does. And what that translates to is that my initial acceleration, let's say I'm cruising at uh, 30 mile an hour and I goose it. Let's say I want to pass somebody, okay? Well, the plugged into this port my acceleration was quick plugged into this port my initial acceleration isn't as quick it but it's quick but not as quick so there's a trade-off um, at this point what i'm going to do i'm going to continue to run with this utilizing this port while i continue to fine tune my timing and I will be going back and forth every now and then to uh, determine which is best. But at this point, utilizing this port, which is for emissions control stuff, is actually working better for me as far as cruising uh, as a vacuum advance source than the actual labeled one. If you follow me on that, well then that's good. Now, some people would say uh, to double up the vacuum sources because, you know, I've got the exact same thing on this carburetor, too. And uh, uh, from what I, my research has indicated, you do not want to use the tie, double the tie both vacuums together and that it would be too strong. And, I, and, you know, if one port's too strong right now at this where I'm set, then two definitely will be. So anyway... Uh, as far as carburetor sizes, I think they're sized pretty good for the truck. It starts good, and, you know, when it's cruising along on, you know, slower cruises around some of the, uh, like, uh, some of the back roads I like to cruise on, it just, it, right now, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, just a ticket away, just like a, like a Singer sewing machine, which is very nice. So, anyway, playing with the timing also affects the carburetor. Now, also, the timing, um, I'm sorry, the idle at 700 RPM is not too high, but it's still got a little roughness to it. It's not as smooth as I really want to get it. I almost have to take it to 800 RPM to get it as smooth as I want, and to me, that's just too high of an R, uh, idle RPM for this particular engine. Keep in mind, stock, this engine is designed to idle at 450 to 500 RPM. So that's a big difference. Uh, and that could affect uh, uh, my, uh, mile per gallon and all kinds of good stuff. So we are constantly playing with it and fine tuning as we go. Now, I do have a timing light with an adjustable advance setting on it that I picked up at Harbor Freight for $19.95. And guess what? It is so unreliable. I, I'm not even utilizing it. Uh, my static timing I used, and I'm also using uh, my vacuum gauge and using what's called max vacuum at uh, idle, uh, max timing vacuum at idle. As you increase the timing at idle, uh, 
the engine will draw more vacuum to the point where it hits the max point and then it'll start breaking down because you advance too much. But at that point, before it starts breaking down and it's smooth and the idle's picked up and the needle's up into the green around 20 inches of uh, mercury, uh, that is actually too high. You want to back it down two, three to four, even up to four degrees or four inches, I'm sorry, back down uh, at idle. Now that pushes it out of the green into the red where it tells you the, the, the timing is too retarded. Now, always keep in mind the cam has everything to do with everything. This cam has more overlap. It has stay, the valves stay open longer and open sooner. What that does is that robs and they overlap uh, in the process. And what that does is robs vacuum and bottom end torque, okay? I'm fine with that. I know I'll, uh, uh, I know that I'll not get that same vacuum at idle. Now we're talking about at idle uh, and very low speeds, which a little RPM you get over it. So that's not a problem. I could live with that. That's a decision I knew when I made to go with this specific cam. But anyway, just wanted to touch on some of the fine tuning we're doing, and uh, I may hook my gauges up at a later time and. Uh, uh, and show you where I'm at. I will hook the gauges up my standard timing light and uh, When I get it where I want it and I'm going to shoot it into the uh, timing pointer And I want to see where it's lining up on that flywheel for a future reference. So anyway There we go back again I don't know what's going on with this silly thing but anyway I wanted to also talk about the temperature the temperature is while I'm moving it stays I'm going to guess about 175 degrees somewhere around in there it's just at the one of the 180 now if I idle for any extended amount of time it will pick up to oh I'd say probably 185 190 but as soon as I start rolling and get more airflow through that radiator, it just cools right down. So, as far as cooling, this thing's doing really good. Now, I've still got the uh, break-in oil on this, and I wanted to get 500 miles out of it, but I may change soon. Just, uh, I've already changed it once from when I was running it on the uh, engine stand. Well, son of a Oh, it is recording. Okay. I couldn't tell if it was recording or not. All right. I couldn't, uh, uh, I did change the oil once while it was on the uh, engine stand because uh, I wanted to see if I had any metal chips or anything after about oh, an hour uh, break in run, and I didn't. And uh, I don't expect I will now, but I want to, you know, breaking in these, these engines like this, uh, it's just good to keep uh, the. To change that oil a couple times when it's uh, fresh to get the any crud out and get some fresh oil. Now I said I was going to go to 10:30. Uh, now I may do that in winter time. I think I may stay with 30 weight because it seems to be working real good in this engine. Uh, the this engine is very quiet. I don't hear the valves. I don't hear any uh, piston slap or any unusual noises. So I'm liking that 30 weight, and uh, so I may just stay with that. Other impressions, uh, this, uh, I estimate this engine has 150 horsepower. I would almost think it's got a little bit more than that just based on the fact that I'm accelerating going up hills and I'm able to run with modern traffic. I mean, that 216 of course now, it had 100, 000, over 100,000 miles on the bottom end and the top end of course I, I had the head rebuilt, but anyway, that's uh, at 216, it just, I mean, there is uh, an obvious, a very obvious power in difference between this engine and the 216 that was in this. Uh, I have no qualms about taking this out on, uh, uh, on highways now, and uh, I've not ventured out on the interstate yet. And, uh, but I, uh, I can see that coming soon. I just don't want to push it that hard just 
just yet. I just want to, you know, I am breaking it in like I'm going to run it. And I have taken it up to 70 mile per hour on a few occasions and held it there for uh, 20, 30 seconds or so. So it'll do it. But I'm going to hold off on pushing it too hard at this point uh, for a little bit longer. I believe this thing will do 75. It may do even over that, but I think it'll do 75. And uh, we'll see. Uh, I've not spun tires or anything, although I'm sure I could. I, when I was pulling out this uh, earlier today, I, I, uh, that, that clutch is just a little bit harder than the uh, old clutch. And I let it out a little too fast and I got a little skit. But, uh, and I figured if I would have laid on the pedal, I could have probably laid some rubber down. But, you know, I don't want to spend any money on tires at this point. And that's just not what I'm into anymore. Uh, I guess I've just gotten a little older and a long, longer in the tooth. But anyway, so far, uh, so far I'm seeing a lot of good things out of this. Now, I'm seeing a drip right there out of my, uh, out of my draft tube. Uh, down there on my cardboard. I got a cardboard down here so where I can see any drips. So, but that's kind of expected. We'll see how much that goes. Uh, uh, I believe I could put a radio in this thing and hear it. Uh, I'm, I'm real happy with that, with, with just the sound. Uh, I pulled over and uh, up on my brother when he was working on his motorcycle. And he didn't even hear me pull the engine pull up. He just heard the gravel that uh, the crunch underneath the tires. And he thinks it's too quiet. Uh, well, again, <laughs> uh, I'm not into that. Uh, I'm not into the uh, real loud booming sounds that'll run me out of the cab within a half hour of driving it. So anyway, I think it sounds all right. And I kind of like it. Uh, Performance is the cam, dual exhaust, and dual carbs worth the price over a single exhaust, single carb. All right. Well, let me address that in several ways. I, at this point, I can't tell you unless I put a single. Uh, barrel a single carb uh, intake manifold and a single exhaust pipe on this and run it on this exact same engine to see if I notice any difference uh, if there is any difference I would imagine it's at uh, 3,000 rpm and higher uh, because this cam uh, as I pointed out in a earlier uh, video clip uh, it, it's lost some of its low-end torque as far as uh, for, first starting out or when I uh, pull out of a turn uh, like out of a corner and I have to you know go up to second gear I've got to give it a little bit more gas than I had to with the 216 to pull out of it uh, so that low-end torque uh, I've lost some of it but uh, it more than makes up for it by the power it gets at 3,000 rpm and higher uh, because that's where uh, the higher speeds, uh, 60 mile an hour and above, will be. And uh, in order to run with a lot of modern traffic, you got to be able to run that way. And I believe this will do it. So, if I can get the idle ironed out like I want, I'm pretty sure I'll be pretty happy with uh, that cam choice. Now, uh, the dual carbs, uh, I don't know if it's that much of an improvement. The main thing that these dual carbs give is the wow factor. I've popped a hood or two for a couple people, and the first thing they go is wow. I mean, it really just gives a wow factor. So, uh, I'll know soon whether or not I'm drinking more gas or if it's actually getting better gas mileage in the 216. So. As loose as that 216 was, I mean, <laughs> it didn't take a whole lot to spin that engine anyway. So we'll see. Anyway.